been a minute yes i know uh i'm well myself i welcome you back to my youtube channel my name is jemi naftali i am a pediatrician by profession and this channel is about kids welfare whereby i create the awareness on common illnesses affecting children while growing up i mostly talk to the mothers because they are the key caretakers of these children i want to involve them into the management of these babies at least they have the know-how on what really some of these diseases or illnesses that affect these children while growing up so this is it about this channel if you are new please join the family by hitting the subscribe button to become part of this family because these are family and we really want uh, to welcome all of you join us by hitting that subscribe button if you're that returning subscriber thank you so much for always keeping tuned thank you for always coming back to watch my content i do not take anything for granted thank you and this is the place to be this is a place to be so keep uh watching my videos uh in today's video i want us to talk about a common thing that i've seen and i've seen it bothering many mothers and that is the uh, the septic cord, septic cord or infected cord. This is the infected umbilicus, uh, the umbilical cord. Yes, that is what we call it. Now, what are the signs that this cord is septic or this cord is infected? Sep septic means it is infected because it's from the word sepsis. Remember, it's not the first time I'm mentioning the word sepsis. Sepsis basically means uh, infections. So what are the signs of an infected cord? First of all, uh, there's a video I did on how to take care of this cord to prevent this infection. Yeah, we have to take good care of it. When the child is born, there is that umbilical cord that is cut to separate the baby from the mother. This is the what we are talking about. And in few days, and we give it a maximum of 21 days, this cord should separate or rather it should fall off. So it depends with babies. I have seen mothers getting worried that their cord has taken two weeks, one week is still normal. We said at least it should take 21 days to fall off or to separate. So uh, this is the norm. This is, this is what should happen. Now, if this cord uh, prolongs now a separation, if it takes long to separate, you see uh, this baby has got a... Uh, one month plus and they still have sorry and they still have their cord on their it has not separated we mentioned on things that we use nowadays we use a cream called the uh 7.1 percent chlorhexidine this is what we use for the cord nowadays we don't use other things we do not want to use a surgical spirit yeah so after it has separated now there is a stamp there's a stamp that is usually left and this stamp we have to really take care of it sometimes the infection comes even before the cord separates and this could be one of the uh, sign that there is an infection if the cord prolongs or it takes so long to separate now this is one thing uh so we are saying that it can get infections before it separates or even after separation after the separation we, we are supposed to take care of that uh of that stamp yeah we really should wipe that place until it cleans off now what are the signs that this cord is not clean so number one we are saying it could uh, prolong separation that is number one number two uh this baby uh starts uh the the cord we, we start getting some some uh, pass some pass from the cord yeah and if it is so bad it has got full uh, smell so it is full smelling full smelling meaning it has a bad smell if you you feel a bad smell coming from this cord so this is another sign to show that this cord is infected and it is not clean because you should never have the pass yeah it should be as clean and we tell mothers to wipe or to clean at least once per day using this uh uh, uh 7.1 percent chlorohexidine if the cord has not separated uh the 7.1 percent chlorohexidine helps in or facilitate a faster falling off or faster separation of this cord now we have those uh the the, the pass we are talking about it should never have pass it should never have a bad smell this is what we are calling the false smell from the cord yeah uh another sign that this cord is uh is, is, is septic or it is infected 
uh, the baby starts getting inability to breastfeed. The baby no longer uh, breastfeeds, they just cry, they have got irritability, they're just irritable, just, cr uh, just crying and they're not able to breastfeed. Remember, uh, the, a good sign that the baby is fine, the baby is okay, is by baby breastfeeding on demand. So we do not have issues, but if just putting this baby on the breast and they're just crying, crying, and Again, they are not breastfeeding. So inability to breastfeed or refusal to breastfeed, is it could be a sign of an infected uh, cord or infected the umbilical cord. Yeah. So other things are fevers. The baby starts developing fevers. So when you get hold of the baby, you find that the temperatures are so high. And when we measure, you find that they are 38 degrees Celsius and above. So this is now fever because you normally see the temperature should not go beyond 37 degrees a degree Celsius. So if they have got fevers on and off, this could be a sign of an infected cord again. So we need to be very, very, very careful. That's why we tell mothers to avoid all these things. We tell the mothers uh, not to use any piece of cloth at home to to wipe the remaining the stamp after the cord has separated don't use any piece of cloth because you do not know how clean this piece of cloth is you might see it a uh, clean but it is not sterile or rather it is contaminated so we do not see the germs by just basically looking at the at the, at the cloth but the, the, the thing is uh it could be septic yeah I mean, it could be uh, contaminated. It is not sterile at all. So we tell them, if you have to uh, to wipe, and according to how I said in the previous video on how to clean the cord, so use a piece of cotton wool uh, using warm saline water and then wipe around that cord after it has separated just to clean everything up. So don't use any piece of cloth, mothers. I repeat this again and again. Now, this is this is... This is some of some of the things that uh, give us or bring us these infections. So this is how these babies are present. Now, what happens when you see these babies with such? What happens? What do we do when they come to hospital? So when you notice all these mothers, don't stay at home. Please come to hospital. Let's uh, check out, out uh, the, the babies. Yeah. Let's do the checkups on the baby. So when we examine, when you bring the baby to hospital, so there's nothing when the, we have this pass coming out, we have fevers, there's nothing to do at home. Let me repeat it. You are not supposed to uh, to stay at home. There's no medication or there's nothing to do at home. Just bring this baby to us so that we can do uh, the examination. We examine the area, the cold area, and we see. Uh, other tests we could do, we could do some uh, blood tests that confirm sepsis or confirm uh, sepsis or infections. Maybe full... Uh, full blood count for example yeah so what we do depending on the level of infection how this cord appears so we might uh, mostly there's usually an antibiotic that we give depending on how it is if it is too much we might even do the intravenous or the IV drugs we might even admit these babies yeah because of the septic cord because of the infection it's that serious if it is high high up so we might give IV antibiotics so if it's not too much now we can give also oral oral antibiotic we tell the mothers to to go back home and we give antibiotics yeah we give antibiotics and depending we might also give some cream to apply most commonly on top of every other treatment we educate the mothers on hygiene basically the hygiene uh, plays a, a lot role when it comes to infected cords, we tell the mothers you should wash your hands before touching this cord. Uh, use clean, uh, don't use uh, those, 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 those piece of clothes. This is the advice that you want to give the mother because it is the hygiene. The mother does not wash their hands. They just get hold of the baby. They have just changed their diapers, then go back to cleaning the cord without washing their hands. All this will introduce infections into the cord. So we are saying hygiene is number one, number one a treatment before even we go to the antibiotics and the stuffs. So mothers, I thought that this was good to tell you. These are the signs to show that the cord is infected and we are saying when you see these are signs, you don't stay at home, you bring this baby to hospital. Don't do over-the-counter drugs because we need to check these babies and uh, examine and see if they're breastfeeding and see the level of infection to this cord. So this is it. If you have got any questions, please go to my comment section, comment, any clarification again. Also, my email is provided at the end of uh, the video. So thank you to those who are coming to my email and asking questions. I believe that uh, I give 
uh, you get the responses that I give you back. So thank you for always keeping tuned. Again, if you have not subscribed, a big, big number is watching my videos, but they have not subscribed. We are road to 5K subscribers, guys, and I know this is very, very possible. So please, please, if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to be part of us, yeah? Again, share these videos widely to reach as many people as possible. You never know the people that you're helping. I feel so good, so good when people call me uh interact with me yet i don't even know them but i feel that i have helped them there's maybe a mother struggling somewhere with such things that we talk about they don't know even where to start yeah so when they reach out i feel i feel very much much accomplished so thank you so much for watching thank you for listening watch until the end until next time bye bye